All right, so we're gonna get started with section four of Crash Zone. So just to kind of recap where you're at, um, when you run the game, we'll make it full screen here, um, you should be able to kind of select between these two tiles, press space to go. Um, <clears throat> you don't really have any backgrounds or anything, but your car should move and you should actually have a number representing health going down and you should be able to see that on both cars. So make sure your game is working up to this point before you continue, okay? All right, so what we're going to do in this section, it's going to be a lot of visual stuff and kind of adding some sounds in, right? Um, so the first thing that if you're doing the written presentation is they have you go in and load in the sprites. Well, I think we did this earlier on. So you just want to make sure that on your cars, you have all five of these frames on here. And you want to make sure if you click on the animation one, make sure that the speed is zero on these. Um, and then also, this is the time where you'd want to check your collision boxes. I think the default collision box is fine, but if you want to adjust it, now would be the time to do the collision boxes, okay? So that's basically the first thing that you want to check there. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead. I'm actually doing the instructions myself here on the phone, so I can kind of go side by side with you. All right, so we did that, we did that. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to go to our event sheet, and we just need to start adding some groups because we have enough code now where we want to start grouping some stuff together here, right? So you can see we're starting to get quite a bit of code. We actually have 44 events, um, so we do want to add a group. So we're going to right-click out here. We're going to add a group. So once again, you just right-click out in the open space to do that. This group is going to be called Collision Events. So we're going to click OK. Now we have this nice collision events group. And then basically what we want to do is all of this collision damage stuff needs to go in there, right? So what I'm going to do is this is where basically where it says assign damage to car black and car white. We want all of that. So if you click this assign damage to car black comment, go all the way down to the bottom. If you hold shift and click on the bottom one from the left side, it should all highlight yellow. Now remember, you need to click it on the far left side, not like in the middle. Otherwise, you'll just grab the conditions or just grab the actions. So remember to be grabbing it by the far left. If you have it all highlighted yellow, then pull it into your collision events. And then there you go. And so now we have all that in as a nice group, collision events like that. Okay. So that's the first group we're going to have. Um, then we're going to add another group called Sprite Health Levels. So we're going to add another group here. Um, sprite uh, Health levels. So what we're going to do is we're going to use those animations that we have. So essentially, um, as we take damage, we want the car to look more damaged, right? Um, and what we'll do is let's just do, um, they don't have it here in the presentation that I'm seeing, but let's add another group here. Um, I think we need one. We'll just do like uh, car controls maybe. Well, hold on. Cancel. Let me see here one second. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's just do that. Let's just add another group here because I don't like those car controls just sitting maybe they get moved later on I could be wrong but that's fine but I kind of want this WASD kind of in a group too so I'm going to do that you don't necessarily have to do it um, but <clears throat> I like I like pretty much everything in a group for example all right so that's what I've got I've got three groups there um, <clears throat> so now the sprite health level is where we're going to start adding some new events right so what we're going to do is let's add an event to sprite health level we want to do system is between values. So we're going to do is between values. Okay. And then what we want to do <clears throat> is we want to start with the car black health. So we're going to type in car black dot health. And then we want to know <clears throat> for the lower bound, we're going to do one. And then for the upper bound, we're going to do 125. So basically, our car's health starts at 500. So this is kind of the lower end of it. So we're saying if our car is between 1 and 125 health, we're going to have like the most damaged frame on there, right? So if we go to car black here, looks like frame 4 would be like our last frame. So what I'm going to do is if we're basically in that, we're going to add an action for car black. And I'm going to set frame. Okay. And we're going to do frame 4. This is going to be the most damaged looking car. Okay. <clears throat> And then what we're going to do is we're going to set frames for all of the other ones as well, okay? So now what we're going to do is we have to do basically other sets of values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and paste it. And we're just going to do a few ranges here, right? So our next range is going to be from 125 to 250. So here I'm going to say lower bound is 125, um, upper bound is 250, okay? And then this one is going to be the next one on the list. So this should be frame three. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and do the next set. Um, yep, we did that. We did that. Um, 
And let me just double check this here. All right, perfect. I just wanted to get to the page that shows me everything. <clears throat> okay. Oh, so actually my bad. Yeah, actually, no, I'm okay with this. We're going to do it like this. They have it a little bit different, but I kind of like the way that I have it set up here. All right, so then we're going to do a next one is going to be from 250. Uh, 250 to 375. So let's do 250 to 375. Okay. All right, and then that frame is going to be one because that's going to be like one of the less damaged ones. Okay. And then... Yeah, and then basically the way they have it, um, so I might change this up a little bit here, but they just have one that says if the health is less than zero. So let's just do this. So we're going to say car black, uh, uh, compare instance variable. We'll get there, we'll get there. All right, so we're going to say health is less than or equal to zero. I suppose this makes sense. All right, so if less than or equal to zero, so we're going to put this in order here just so you guys can see it. So we'll do 250 to 375 at the top. Let's do the 125 here. All right, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to say if health is less than or equal to zero frame four. I wasn't thinking that made sense at first, but I do remember when you do the game over, I guess you do still see the car on the screen. And then what we'll do is the one to 125, this will be frame three. Oops, not 33. Oops. Frame three. Okay, and then this one's going to be frame two. All right, and then this will be frame one, which we already have. All right, so it should look like this. And then frame zero will basically be if you're above 375, and that'll just be the default. So this is what it should look like. If your health is between 250 and 375, black's frame is one. If it's 125 to 250, frame two. Uh, just like that to frame three, and then just like that to frame four. So <clears throat> this is basically all for car black, right? So now what we want to do is we want to do this whole thing for car white. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste this whole chunk, and we're going to do the whole same thing here for car white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift and click on the, so click on the top one, hold shift, click the bottom one, and I'm going to do control C to copy, control V to paste, okay? And then with this group highlighted, I should be able to right click and do replace object. And I want to replace car black with car white. And it changes everything to car white for me. So now that should all be set. Okay. So basically it should look identical to the top one, but then it should just be for car white. Okay. All right. So they're both set up to show damage. We could go ahead and test that. So um, I'll just test it really quick here. So what you want to do is run the game, have your cars take some damage. And then hopefully within there, uh, if my game wants to actually run. All right, mine's just sitting on a black screen. I don't want to waste your time. But you just test it. As your health goes down, once again, you should see the car's damage go. Uh, the, da the image should change, right? All right, so now we're going to set some backgrounds, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to add a layer to the bottom here. So what we're going to do first is my mine here is still called layer zero. So yours, if yours is still called layer zero, let's call that the main game layer. And then we're going to right click and add a layer to the bottom. And then this is going to be our background layer. Okay. So we're going to do that. Okay. And then you want to make sure that your main layer is transparent. So turn transparent on on your main layer to make sure that that's there. So then basically we should have like a main layer and a background layer. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we are going to add a sprite. So let's go back to our game here. And we want to make sure. Oh, and I was on the. Hold on, was I on the... Okay, so I did that on the start, which is fine. Yes, we want a main and a background there as well. So I accidentally did that on my start layout, but that's fine. On the game layout, we also want main and start. So we're going to go ahead and rename. So we're going to call this one main. And then we're going to right-click and add a layer to the bottom. We're going to call this one background. Perfect. And then, once again, main layer. Make sure that transparent on the left is selected. And then we're going to go to the background. I'm going to make a new sprite. So let's make a sprite. Okay, and this is going to be my start background. Oh, you know what? Hold on, I should be on the start screen. Let's go back to the start screen because we're making the start background. So sure, go to the background on the start screen. Uh, double click to make a sprite. Perfect, and this is going to be called start background. Okay, insert, click on screen. And then we're going to go ahead and load it up and you should have your um, all your sprites saved to your computer. So I've got mine saved, where is it, right here. Images. And then we want the start background, which is this one right here, start BG. 
So that's the one that you want loaded in. Okay. <clears throat> and then basically what you want is if we take this, if you want to get it perfectly set, just set the origin to top left. So we'll quick assign top left. And then I will do that. And then we can just set the position to 0, 0, and you're good. Okay. So if we go to the left here, set the position to 0, comma 0, press Enter, and we're good. And then what you could do is go ahead and lock that background down so that you're good to go. Okay. So we've got that. We did that. Um, we set, yep, we did all that. Perfect. Okay. Um, and we already have the dirt and the pavement files in, so we're good with that. Yep. So that's something that they do a little bit later. Um, yep, we did that. All right, so now we have to make the dirt background, and so we're going to go to the game layout here. So we're going to go back to the game layout. Now we're going to add the other backgrounds in here. So you're going to click on the background layer. <clears throat> you are going to make another sprite. And this sprite is going to be called Dirt Background. Insert, click on screen, load in the image. So we want the BG Dirt. And we're going to do the origin top left again. So quick assign top left. Okay. And then we're going to set the position to 0, 0. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and make the pavement background. So there are going to be two separate background objects. So we're going to double click here. Make another sprite background. So another sprite. My sprite not popping up. Am I here to sprite? I don't know. Oh, that's sorry. I was not in a search bar. I was in the name part. Okay. So we're going to make a sprite. And this is going to be called pavement. BG for pavement background. Insert. Click on screen. Load that in. And then we should have the pavement background here. Right click on origin, quick assign top left. By the way, if you don't see this origin, you just click on the origin button here. All right, so we've got that. And then we're going to set that position to zero, zero also. All right, so the way that this works is these two backgrounds are basically sitting on top of each other. And on the start screen, based on which background you pick, we just make one of them invisible is essentially what we're going to do. Okay, so we've got that set. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to make one of them initially invisible. Okay. Um, let me see. Yep. All right. So we have to make a wall object too that's invisible. That's going to be a solid because right now the cars can just go through this wall here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make another. Oh, so we already have the wall object. Oh, perfect. That's already there. Nice. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So the wall, they just want you to double check that your wall object is set to invisible. So we can do that. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is this wall object that we have, we're going to make it invisible. And then the wall right now is just like really skinny, but we want to make sure that that's overlapping kind of this red stuff here. So that actually goes out to the wall. So you should already have a wall positioned on there. Sorry, I'm recording this video like way after I did part three. So... I don't remember exactly where we were, but we're getting there. All right, so we've got the wall there. And then actually, do I not have a wall? Oh, no, here's the wall on the bottom. Yeah, so make sure that your wall is, like, basically covering up all the red stuff because that's the part you're actually colliding with, right? And we'll double check, but a wall should have solid behavior. Yep, and we did that in an earlier section. So it should look something like that. Then once again, click your wall on the right and make sure that they are all initially invisible like that if you just click one of them only one of them would be invisible so i'm going to go ahead and test really quick well we'll see if mine runs mine just did that black screen it might just sit on a black screen so maybe i won't be able to show you and it could have something to do with me having the recording software on yeah but that should be solid and that should be good to go all right so we did that okay <clears throat> so now we're going to make some events so we're going to go to the es game event sheet <clears throat> And on start of layout, we are going to basically make our dirt invisible, I think, is what we're going to do. So, yep. So we're going to go to our ES game. We're going to go to our on start, which is up here. Add an action for the dirt. Uh, so it should be for dirt background here. And we're going to set visible. And we want that to be invisible. Okay. So what that's going to mean is by default, it's going to go to the pavement. But once again, we're going to change that. Um, based on what we pick on the start screen, right? Um, all right. And then what we're going to do 
is, oh yeah, we're going to test with, with the speed variable. That's right. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do, let me just double check this. Um, go back here. All right. So we're going to add a sub event. So we're going to make a, so right click on your on of layout. We're going to add a sub event. And then we're going to do system compare variable. And we want to compare the speed. There we go. All right. And we want to know if the speed equals 250. So what we're going to do is based on <clears throat> the speed variable is we're going to test which background we're on with that. Because basically each background is going to have a different kind of speed. Okay. So we're going to do that. And then what we're going to do is if the speed is 250, we're actually going to make the dirt visible. So 250 is going to be the, the dirt and I think 350 is going to be the pavement. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this dirt visible, invisible here, and I'm going to change this to visible. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to add an action for the pavement and set the pavement invisible. So I'm just going to put this down here again. I'm going to right click on this dirt background, replace object. Uh, we're going to replace the dirt background with the pavement background. Okay. So <clears throat> what's going to happen is, is on the ES start, you can see here that when we press one, we're setting the speed to 250. And when we press two, we're setting the speed to 250, right? So what happens is, is if we press one and set the 350, the on start of layout um, here is just going to make the back dirt background invisible, right? But if we press two and then go into the game, speed is going to be 250. So therefore, when we enter the game at 250, this is going to trigger, which is going to basically make the dirt visible and the pavement invisible. So that you would go ahead and test. I would show you on mine, but for some reason, my game's not wanting to run while I'm recording. So that's fine. We'll just keep going. So we got that set perfectly. So if we run it, it should be good. And with that, uh, that is the end of section four. So that was a pretty easy section, right? So um, that'll end section four. So then the next video will be section five that we'll record.